The sun has grown so very, very old. How long cold, fading death? How long? Welcome to Night Vale. Our top story. Last night's Night Vale PTA meeting ended in bloodshed as a rift in space-time split open in the Main Street Recreation Center auditorium, setting loose several confused and physically aggressive pteranodons. The glowing portal remained open and shrieked incessantly, an unholy sound that witnesses say resembled noisy urchin children caught in a combine harvester and then slowed down and amped up through some kind of open source, easy to use audio editing software. The pteranodons mostly attacked women with glasses. Authorities are still unsure why, as Night Vale's only flying dinosaur expert, Joel Eisenberg, still has not recovered from last year's bout with throat spiders. It took most of an hour to corral the panicked beasts back into the vortex and resume the meeting, which had mostly been about recent lunchroom price hikes and had devolved into name-calling because Susan Willman called Diane Creighton's son, Josh, a bit tubby and that maybe he needs a financial incentive to eat a bit less. In this reporter's opinion, Susan Willman is dangerously obsessed with the New York Times best-selling Freakonomics books, dangerously so. Fortunately, no one was injured or killed in the incident, although experts from Timothy's Auditorium Repair Contractors, Inc. estimates close to $750,000 in damage has been done to the Rec Center Auditorium, and that cost includes free storm windows and a complimentary seasonal insulation consultation. It's election season again, and you know what that means. Sheriff's secret police will be coming by to collect certain family members so that everyone votes for the correct council seats and there's no confusion. These family members will be held in a secure and undisclosed location, which everyone knows is the abandoned mine shaft outside of town. But don't let the name fool you, listeners. It's been used for years for so many kidnappings and illegal detentions that the abandoned mine shaft outside of town is actually a pretty nice location these days, featuring king-size beds, free Wi-Fi, and HBO. Also, torture cubicles, but I don't think anyone's going to make the council use those. Remember, this is America. Vote correctly or never see your loved ones again. This message brought to you by the City Council. The Night Vale Daily Journal today announced that due to the recent economic downturn, they will start running ads on the front page. Any business interested in running one of these platinum premium ads should contact editor Leanne Hart. Hart mentioned that they have also created a write-your-own-news-story program for interested citizens. Because every writer has been laid off, the Daily Journal now needs these community contributions to supply Night Vale with important news and features. The first Platinum Premium ad runs next Monday and features the terrified face of an infant primate with a superimposed spoon that has been stone-sharpened to a rough point, and the tagline, Better Use Tide. Hart also said that last year's explosion that decimated the Daily Journal's distribution plant is still totally an accident, and would like her insurance rep to call her back. Please, call her back.
This just came across the wire. The secret police have issued a new statement shedding more light onto last night's PTA meeting incident. The noisy portal and subsequent dinosaur attack that brutally interrupted discussion of swing set repairs on the elementary school playground stayed open long after recreation center employees thought they had rounded up all of the ancestral avian beasts. And authorities warn there is still at least one more pteranodon on the loose. Citizens should cover themselves with a low SPF sunscreen and hide in a tiled bathroom. Several curious handball players in the court next to the auditorium actually popped their heads into the portal just to see what was on the other side of the vortex and came back dramatically changed. The players aged several thousand years in what bystanders experienced as only a few seconds. Those handball players now straddle the unenviable border of millennially wizened and cripplingly insane. Since psychological and emotional damages are no longer considered valid claims by the greater medical insurance community, we are still reporting zero injuries. We'll update you as further details surface in our special ongoing and very special coverage of Pteranodon Attack Gate. Are we safe from dinosaurs? No way. City Council has asked me to read the following message. If you notice strange auras around any of the following objects in your house, blender, shower head, dog, husband, wife, table, chair, doorknob, baseboard, vacation souvenirs or photos, collectibles of any kind, especially those depicting or involving horses, DVDs, especially Cliffhanger, There's Something About Mary, and The Wire Fourth Season, and any bagged lettuce from California or Mexico, please report to the council for indefinite detention. Speaking of the city council, it voted this week to remove the large lead-plated door from the northeasternmost crook of Radon Canyon. You know, the area pulsing with green light and sotto voce basso humming. Proponents of the measure called the large yellow emblem and red lettering that spelled out danger, plutonium, do not open door, risk of death, were at worst an offensive eyesore and at best a hacky sci-fi cliche. Many Night Vale citizens attended the meeting, including, it was said, several angels. Although no angel is admitted to have been present for the city council meeting or any other event ever, for that matter. Old woman Josie agreed with the measure, adding that lead is a health hazard and that the old door was nothing but a ticking time bomb. According to the meeting minutes, Josie said, That old door. Ooh, that door. Someone's going to get some kind of lead poisoning. Carlos, beautiful Carlos, tragically shorn of his locks, reportedly was the only dissenting voice, but it is not clear he actually opposed the measure as the minutes only report him stating, there is no time, no more time, into a black rectangle in his hand and then running, winded from the community hall. According to old woman Josie, he was still absolutely perfect and smelled of lavender chewing gum. More breaking news on the Pteranodons. We humbly offer the following retractions from our previous reports. Secret police are now reporting that the offending beasts were not pteranodons after all, but pterodactyls. Also, pteranodons aren't even dinosaurs as this station previously stated, just winged reptiles that lived about 70 million years after pterodactyls. 
Finally, earlier we reported a death toll of zero, when, in fact, the number is closer to 38. We regret these errors.